the audio you were listening to is the panel that's going on indoors. You can catch that at our other channel, ustream.tv slash channel slash Radical Russ for uh, the coverage of those panels. They're doing a cultivation panel. Sounds really good in there. Cannabis Carrie is joining us here on the guest cam. Hi, Carrie. I just saw a dog eat a donut. <laughs> Those kind of things will happen. Here. <laughs> so you've been going around, you and uh, and uh, the NorCal kid. Did you do, do that thing you're gonna do? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, it's a little crazy down here, and you've seen the scene down here with the crowds, yeah, and the vendors and all the excitement that's going on. Well, also at this event, they have um, a section that isn't so crazy. A section that is full of artwork and artists working on work and uh, music and a few massage therapists and green girl uh, is up there yeah. spinning her hem and uh, they're doing tea ceremonies so um we didn't want to send you and clico to go do the tea ceremony no, so uh ganja wife norcal kid and myself went up and we got some great footage uh, that we're going to chop together and bring to you next week so you can see that uh, this is a complex event oh, and yeah. it's not all about uh, the craziness in the crowd there's also some healing and some meditative uh, that part of the culture is honored here as well yeah let's see uh multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies maps uh, <laughs> Uh, it's ratcheting up because it's about four it's minutes about before four 20 months. after, so uh, it might be hard to hear some of the aud audio wow. for this part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are having a good time here. We got our, our raffle to do here. Uh, we got new Twitter uh, followers, uh, people we're following now as the normal network. We got Hasavar. Oh, uh, nice. Is now a winner. And uh, there's Da Bubbler. Da Bubbler. Da Bubbler. Da Bubbler. Da Bubbler. Da Bubbler. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not sure how it's going. And we got some interviews coming up here uh, in just a little bit. We got Steve Collette, who's running for Congress here. He'll be on in just about 10 minutes. And then Pony Boy, my nugget from Los Mandiwanos, 445. Ed Forcia, the New Jersey Weed Band, will be in here uh, at 6 o'clock. So uh, we will talk to him as well. More folks are showing up here. It's crazy. It's like a family reunion. Yeah. Lauren Dabbs, Colorado. Colorado more. in the house, representing. Uh, I was going to say, isn't that one of the Dabbs kids? <laughs> it is. It's not our West Coast Megan Dabs. Yeah. It's our uh, Middle America, yeah, our Rocky Mountain uh, Dab Queen Lauren Dabs uh, from Colorado just shut up. So we're definitely going to say hi to her and uh, do what she does. So we saw uh, Cheryl Schumann came by earlier. Nice. Here. I saw her wandering around. We're in her hometown, so she came by and said hi. She's got all sorts of interesting things going on. Oh, great. Uh, I switched out here to the, uh, the outdoor camp so you can kind of see the crowd is building here at the uh, Cannabis Cup as we get toward 420. And I think the stage is... Uh, I don't know why that New Orleans sign is there, though. <laughs> I don't know. I, we can't explain that part. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go flip it around and see what's on the other side real quick, okay? Okay. I think it has something to do with OC Normal. Oh, that could be it. So we're just looking around here. You can see some of the groups, the OC Normal and such. It's much busier. We're up in the non-profit rows, and so uh, it's much busier where people are selling weed and such. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but plenty of people here getting ready to celebrate 420, and it's just so nice to be in this big open air <laughs> studio area. Um, they taped it down good, so I couldn't turn it, but it is uh, to celebrate Mardi Gras. The OC Normal booth has a Mardi Gras themed Oh, I see. Ooh, so that is the uh, pointing down to their booth because you can get um, Mardi Gras beads and spin, and they're you doing really great. You have to really do anything great. special to get the Mardi Gras beads? <laughs> yeah, you have to show your butt. Oh, so it's a, a twist on the old tradition. <laughs> I don't know. I made that up. I don't really know. You're it could be true. It might not be true. Carrie, I just you made can't it up. just make stuff up for our people. <laughs> but if you come up here and show your buds, I'll be your bud. Oh, your buds. Yeah, show oh, your I buds. I thought you said butt. No, buds. <laughs> show your butt. And I'm saying, oh, it's a twist because normally you have to. Right, right, right. Show your boobs. Right. So I'm just confused. Now you have to show your buds. Buds. Okay. okay. Got it. Got it. All right. So it's 420. Actually, it's 40 seconds before 420, but we always like to celebrate things early. So we're going to get our 420 raffle on. Carrie is uh, now. I can't look, but I'm, I want to look, but I'm She's not, not looking. She's not looking, but she is picking. <laughs> not looking, okay. but picking. Okay. Gosh. I want to look and pick, but okay. No looking. Last one in my hand. Pick. Okay. Here it goes. I can't even look. I'm so nervous. Who is that? Oh, wait. I don't want to share their number. Okay. Viri Noriga. Well, I'm not supposed to say her last name. Viri. Viri. <laughs> With the, I should just say the ticket number. 287939. What's your first name, ma'am? What's your first name, ma'am? But soon, but soon. So we're going to text her out and uh, or him. I don't know what that name is, Viri. V-E-R-I. 
I don't know. I want to say it looks like girls riding because it's but, very uh, nice. The, the winner of the kind package. Oh, wow. That's pretty exciting. So a book and a T-shirt, a stealth backpack. And a, a right, right, right. A bunch of stuff. So check that Lighter out. Lighter leaves. So stickers. The kind. And, and I've still got to tweet out. i got still got to text out to a bunch of people because my phone was dead. So. Oh, you can borrow mine, right, right away. Or do you want to text out these people? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'll okay. do that. That sounds fun. Uh, and happy 420 to uh, happy 420. in the West Coast zone. Give you a shot here. The merch <laughs> table. Winners we need to text out to here. Very exciting, all this stuff. This one, right? Yep, that's it. Yeah, this is the <laughs> well, it has been a lot of fun here at the Cannabis Cup. Um, we have a big crew every time we show up now. Uh, we got a crew that sort of shows up, too. Yeah. At least they're here on the West Coast. We've got some peeps now uh, in Denver and on the West Coast, and it is like a big family maybe, reunion. Maybe this person? Is that one today? The bud one? Yeah, we have two. We have two more entries to win. You have two more chances to win today. Two more chances to win. So uh, if you still want to get a raffle ticket, uh, you can still do that. And this one. I think they need to be texted. Okay, we'll do that. A little bit of housekeeping. All right, coming up next on the show, we've got an interview with. Steve Collette, who's running for Congress. Uh, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll have that interview. Excellent. Thanks for sticking around for Normal Show Live's coverage of the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup 2012 in Los Angeles, California. Welcome back, everyone. Radical West with our live coverage of High Times Medical Cannabis Cup 2012. Good time here in Los Angeles, California. It's 72 degrees out, and uh, we are joined by Aaron Hymas, who's here with Dr. T's Remedies. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you here. So tell us, uh, Aaron, what is Dr. T's Remedies? Dr. T's Remedies, it's a new product we put out called Tiresias Mist, and what it is is basically that growers can make their own feminized seeds now. Growers can make their own feminized seeds now. Okay, so this is a mist, a product that's used on the seeds uh, before they're planted? No, nope, it's actually a process altogether. You're gonna actually start off with an all-female plant. You're gonna choose one branch and spray and treat that one branch. And then what it'll do is get to grow pollen on that, on that branch yeah. and th use that pollen then for any of the flowers and all of your seeds will come out feminized. All right, let me have you scoot in just a little closer because get you out here in the sure. background with the... There you are. All right. There we are. All right, so the feminized seeds, of course, you know, getting your uh, your females, you know, being guaranteed is the idea. Is there, exactly. Is there, how, how do you test the accuracy of that and how well that it works? The best way to do is plant the seeds. There you, you know. go. Then once you've actually been able to sex them and you can actually tell that the, what the sex they are, that's the best way to tell. So... We've run our trials over the last uh, couple of years to be able to make sure that uh, we give people a good quality product. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm trying to find out. Is like, you know, you guys run this through, you know, uh, uh, you have a bunch of people do it. You like, you have a, a, a rate, like a 90%, 80%, 100%. We do 100% money back wow. guarantee. Wow. All yeah. right. We're only dealing with the uh, female genetics, so there's no crossing at all. So you're never going to have any male um, genetics, and we're not also not stressing the plant, so we're not going to permeate. So where you're going to continue to um, continue to bring that uh, uh, hermaphrodite genes along too, so very important. All right, so uh, this is and you're out of uh, Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Arizona. Arizona. So yep. you know Arizona's got their uh, medical marijuana program, but it kind of has been you know yeah. fits and starts, not really happening. Yep. Uh, How has this affected what you're doing down there? I mean, is it is it easy to do what you're doing in Arizona or? Um, we still look over our shoulder yeah. um, just because we have uh, people like Sheriff Joe and Jamber hates us. <laughs> Sheriff Joe's been in the news lately, hasn't he? I mean, there's been <laughs> some controversy over some plant. Is it a, a corruption scandal or something? Yeah, he actually, well, there's a lot that he does. I mean, <laughs> yeah, where do we start? Yeah, I right? mean, exactly. <laughs> he, he doesn't like, um, he's not too big a fan if you're brown or if you're, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if you're not from Arizona or whatever yeah. it may be. He's just kind of an old school 
dirtbag. All basically. right. So uh, the the website is drtsremedies.net. Dot com. Dot com. Yep. But the email is in dot net. That's our shopping cart. I'm so where... confused. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's tough. All right. So we'll do this again so Good. we get it perfect. So the website is? Uh, drtsremedies.com. Okay. No breaks, no periods, just drtsremedies.com. And uh, go right on there, check it out. There's uh, an audio commercial that explains better. And then, um, and then also directions, everything that you're going to need to make sure you're successful. Dr. T's Remedies, create your own feminized seeds, save your strain. And uh, Aaron Hymas, thanks for uh, stopping in and telling people about it. Thank you, sir. Take care. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup 2012. I'm Radical Russ. Normal show live on the normal network with your coverage. And uh, we just passed 420 in my home time zone, my mountain time zone. So big 420 to my uh, mountain time zone homies, uh, all the folks in Boise, Idaho. If you got it, smoke it, but it's Boise, so you might not got it. <laughs> but I tell you what, we'll take care of your share for you. How's that? I am welcoming here to the stage a guest for us here to do our raffle, and that is Coral Reefer from uh, the Coral Reefer show. That I, I don't. I, I, I'm going to mess up the show name, so I'll let you it's introduce It's YouTube.com slash CoralFish19, and then Coral Reefer 420 is the website where all the that's, videos are. Anyway. That's where I get messed up because there's a 19 in one of them and there's a 420 in the And there's Coral Fish, there's Coral Reefer. I can't keep my mind up. <laughs> I just everything. I want it all. I don't, I don't understand it myself. But Coral Fish 19 on YouTube, easy to find. And I always pick these, I feel like. I'm always here right at 420. Right? Uh, how does that happen? It just happens. Well, Magic. just mir miraculously happens. 420 just comes around. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. All right, so we're going to have you do the drawing for uh, our raffle. We've been selling these raffle tickets here for five bucks. We're giving away prize packages that we've named Schwag, Grass, Bud, Kind, Dank, and Chronic. But however, that's only for you know just uh, uh, numerative purposes. It's not that they're actually any dank or kind. You're or not chronic. giving away. Weed. No. We are not giving away weed. That's just that. That's why there's quote marks. But it's on. rated dank. If See, you it's get that. dank. It's I like getting like this would be dank. Yeah, okay. Uh, that kind of thing. All right. <laughs> so uh, we're giving away here the Bud Prize Pack for our Mountain Time Zone uh, winners because okay. th this is the, it's 4:20 somewhere raffle, and okay. it's 4:20 in the Mountain Time Zone, or it was because now it's 4:23. But anyway, we now go to Coral Reefer, who's going to pick. Ticket number two eight seven eight six six, and that is, is Rick. Rick is the big winner. Yeah. Two eight seven eight six six. So congratulations, Rick. Rick! You get Bud, but not really Bud. You, you get, get the Bud, bud prize pack, which includes a stealth backpack the, with the smelly proof lining. It's the carbon activated uh, uh, backpack. Have you seen those? Nice. I did. Right over. Yeah, very cool. I did. Uh, yeah. A T-shirt. Uh, and we've got uh, a normal nug jar comes with that and some other stuff. Great prizes. So, Rick, congratulations. And uh, Coral Reefer, thanks for joining us Thank and helping you. us out. See you again, Russ. All right, we'll be right back with interviews here at the uh, High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. We've got two or three coming up, so stay tuned. I'm Radical Russ. We're back right after this. Thank you. At Normal Show Live's coverage of the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup here in Los Angeles, California. And uh, sitting next to me is Ed Forcian, otherwise known as the New Jersey Weed Man, but now in California. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Russ. Hey, man. Uh, so people have been following you for a long time, your travails, all the different court cases and, and runs for office that you've gone through. Uh, what's the latest with the New Jersey Weed Man? Tell us what's happening with Ed. Well, actually, I've been uh, kind of bi coastal with my fights lately. Yeah, it seems uh, like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I still have my case in New Jersey that I go to trial on on April 10th in Burlington County, which I've been asking people to occupy my courtroom. And it's the best. It's, I'm really advocating very publicly of a jury nullification case. Yeah. You know, I'm arguing the law is wrong. That's what I plan on telling my jury. I want the jury to read everything in the press. That, that that's what I'm arguing. Yeah. And then, of course, here in California, I, have a, I had a dispensary. I actually won my case with the state here when the state raided me. But recently, the feds came in and raided me and just put me out of business. They basically 
took everything, took my money, took my all the weed, basically left me penniless, and I lost my place because I got raided. And then where are we, uh, county, or where are we at here in? Oh, it's Los no, Angeles. Los Angeles, right, right here in LA. Los Angeles, right. And wow. my, my dispensary actually was on Hollywood Boulevard. It was the Liberty Bell Temple. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I've been here for th over three years, and um, I've gone through quite a bit. But we were we were pretty successful. It was a little unique little spot in in Hollywood, and uh, everything was fine until the DEA came in on December the 13th and basically ended it. Yeah, that's uh, you know uh, this. Uh, crackdown is going on there's they're trying to just eliminate our ability to uh, raise money to organize I really see this now as not being about the marijuana but being about the politics it's like they want to shut us up they want us to go away before everyone figures out the truth and that we've been wrong for now a hundred years or so well the DEA officers who uh, who did my case bet definitely told me that that's what it was about yeah they, they didn't hide it um, basically said that I was uh, they were they were told <laughs> to put me out of business and they weren't even intending to arrest me or charge me it was all about putting me out of business yeah, these the situation these smash and grab this thuggery this, these tactics where they don't have to arrest anyone they don't have to do anything they can just go in and bust up your stuff or take your stuff. I, lo I love the asses at force picture as well, where you know yeah. they they take your money, they charge your money with a crime, and you have to go find find a lawyer to prove your money was innocent when you don't have any money. <laughs> they, right. They took exactly. it. It's like, exactly. What a jacked up system this is. Yeah, most people lose their money like that. It's yeah. Catch twenty two, and um, I had that happen to me before too, and I didn't even fight for it. it just they just took it. Yeah. They just took it, and there was nothing to do. I, it, it would have cost me a bunch of money with, if I got a lawyer. Um, right away, the lawyer's telling me, uh, you know, this is going to cost, that's going to cost, and the judge is not going to let you. And if you do fight it, you're just setting yourself up as a target of the of the Justice Department anyway. Right, right. So, you know, it, it turned out not to be worth it, and I walked away from that. That was like two years ago. Now this time, they took everything. They took everything. You know. <laughs> So yeah, yeah it's, good, it's yeah. tough. It's tough. You're one of the warriors that's out there on the front lines, you know, and they're directly going after you, your assets, your message, what people are, uh, you know, just trying to trying to shut us down. And it's so brave of you to be standing up and, and doing this and having to go fight these court battles. So if people want to help you out, Ed, uh, how can they do that? They got websites, places they can donate or get more info? Well, I've been telling everyone to go to my website, njweedman.com, and, uh, basically spread the message about my upcoming case you know I'm not asking much I want people to spread the message about my upcoming case because again what I'm doing in my case in New Jersey is I'm advocating jury nullification now I know over and you know over 50 percent of Americans believe marijuana should be legal that said and done I think a jury of my peers there will be at least several members of the jury who will believe marijuana should be legal and I'm representing myself and in my opening statement, basically, I'm going to explain me, and I'm going to explain how I believe that marijuana should be legal, that, that this, that the law is wrong and not I. And that's what I want. I want my jury to, you know, use their, their own conscience and, you know, acquit me. And now, for the last 15 years in my little corner of New Jersey, Burlington County, Camden County area, I've been, you know, that eccentric guy that's been talking about marijuana for, you know, the last 15 years. Yeah. Everyone in that area knows me. I mean, you know, if you know anything about marijuana, you know me. If you are a politician wannabe, you know me. Because I always get on the ballot. I always, every year, that was that was one of my early things that I did. I just called it basically as a, as a way of civil disobedience. Every year I would get on the ballot under the legalized marijuana party. And basically that would be my, my only thing that I talked about. Yeah, yeah. And... You know, I was that quirky guy in like 1997 when I first did it, you know, but now, you know, I, I don't know, I, I, I think I graduated to a different level that, that everyone's like, you know, you know that guy? He was right all the time, you know? <laughs> that's, well. that's what I get now in New Jersey. And, you know, I get positive press and I think the press is on my side as far as, uh, you know, should I be allowed to tell the truth to the jury? And that's basically all I tell everybody. Like, I should be able to be allowed to tell the truth. The truth, and the truth is, the law is a lie. You know, the right. law. The law is wrong, and most of us, 
and most members of the jury know that. And I just think it's funny that New Jersey has, as two years ago, legalized medical marijuana and then has not implemented it. And for the last two years, it's been a big fight, and the press has been covering it back and forth. And the timing of my court case is just going to get sucked into all that, the politics of pot. It already has been, you know. Me out here in California showing that I was uh, selling marijuana out of, at a dispensary and I had it all on the internet. All the people in New Jersey were looking back and, and watching me also. I had a huge following in New Jersey and the sky wasn't falling, you know? Yeah. You know, in New Jersey, that's what that's what Governor Christie acts like. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> the, the sky's going to fall if we... Uh, it'll be terrible. <laughs> yeah, it'll be terrible. We don't want it to be like California. That's what he says. That's oh, part I of his... It. Yeah. I heard it. And I'm like, uh, you know, that pissed me off one time. I wrote a letter. Of course, I mailed weed with the letter, and I wrote him a letter. And for a little while, I was on a letter writing campaign to Christy, uh, the Governor Christy, 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 Christopher Christy. Yeah. And, uh, What's up yeah, with that? Yeah, I, 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 would, <laughs> I would just. Yeah. <laughs> we have a we have a talk radio host in Portland called Lars Larson. Uh -huh. I'd love to get him to interview Chris Christie. <laughs> Lars Larson interviews Chris Christie. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but, but Christopher Christy. Uh, he, he has this thing about allowing medical marijuana to be implemented. Like, I, I really can't believe to, yeah. for, for two years he has stalled as one excuse after another excuse. And, um, no, it's, oh, and, the, and the few steps he has taken on this issue, he's, uh, you know, in bed with all these, you know, his political cronies on and, and trying to, uh, if there's going to be anything done, his friends are going to get rich on it. It's just awful. I, we uh, work with uh, Chris Goldstein out there and Ken Wolski, a couple right. guys out in, in New Jersey, are mm -hmm. always telling us about what's going on behind the scenes that we can't talk about on the air, right? It's like, right. oh, that's just those, ooh, those <laughs> bastards. Well, I hope my court case becomes a referendum on Governor Christie's policies and tactics. I hope you know, so, too. I, I really hope that... A, a, a lot of the uh, marijuana reformers show up at my courtroom. I, I'm, I'm constantly advocating to occupy my courtroom. That's what I want them to do. All right, so let's give them the dates and the times and the website so they can do that. All right, I'm going on a trial in Burlington County. April 10th is the day it's scheduled before Judge Delahaye. And my website is njweedman.com, and I basically put everything on there, njweedman.com. Right on. Ed Fortune, thanks for joining us. Yeah, NJWeedman.com. And uh, check it out. And good luck on everything. Thank you. Thank All you, Russ. Right. All right. We'll thanks, be back. High Times, Normal. We'll be All back you. with more coverage of the High <laughs> Times Medical Cannabis Cup here. We're winding things up on the Sunday. And uh, the awards are coming up soon. We will stream those live, assuming that the Internet uh, will make it out that far. Uh, we don't know how good the wireless will be. The stage is a little bit farther out there. But we will do our best. If we get signal, we will bring it to you starting at around 7.30 p.m. Pacific time and uh, other stuff as we uh, think of it. So stay tuned. High times. Normal show live. Medical Cannabis Cup. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage of the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup in Los Angeles 2012. I'm Radical Russ Belville. It's Sunday, February 12th, 2012, and we are having a spectacular day, meeting all sorts of fantastic activists from all around California and all around the West Coast and, well, the nation for that matter. And joining us right now uh, to my right is Larry Love, L.S. Love. However you know him, he's an uh, activist here with MedicalMarijuana.com, uh, Medical Marijuana Radio. Dot com, so we have something in common. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you, Russ. It's a pleasure to uh, finally meet you. I listen to your show all the time, and uh, it just it's nice to be here with you today from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe. All right. 505 in the house, right? Absolutely. We are here, and uh, not only do I do my, my little show on uh, Saturday nights, but uh, I also uh, run the front end of one of the licensed producer dispensers in New Mexico. There's only 23 of them. Right. That's something people, you know, they always hear about medical marijuana states. There's 16 states, and they list them off. Blah, 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 blah. New Mexico is one of them. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people understand that outside California, it's a lot different. There's The systems are different. There's a lot more hoops to jump through. What was it like trying to get your permitting for the, one of these 23 dispensers? Well, uh, it was a long process. Uh, it, I'm not the owner. I just worked the front office. But mm -hmm. uh, it took about two years to get approved, and uh, it was it just painstakingly long. Yeah. You have to get patients on your board. You need three patients. You need a doctor. You need all kinds of uh, uh, requirements to be a nonprofit because right. you must be a nonprofit there. Mm. So uh, New Mexico's program, 
last I looked, about 3,500 patients. Is there more than that now? Uh, it's about double now. It's, oh, okay. it's over 7,000. They get over 200 applications uh, per month. And uh, again, there's 23 producers are growing and dispensing to these patients. That's all that they have right now. Yeah. And of course, uh, New Mexico, uh, along with California, the only states that are currently uh, recognizing post-traumatic stress as a valid condition. Right, yes. Uh, I believe that 50% of the uh, patients in the program are in for PTSD, yeah. uh, which is which is great. A lot of, a lot of vets uh, really need it, and it's really helping them. You know, we've got medicalmarijuanaradio.com that you're working with here, and uh, folks, if you want any information, you can send an email to ll at medicalmarijuanaradio.com for the email address here. But, uh, you know, you, you brought up, you listen to our show, you know, you've got your show coming out. There's, uh, I've seen the hemp TV guys running around here. I've seen uh, Cannabis Planet TV. Uh, marijuana media is just taking off, and it seems like, it seems the time is right for a specific niche type of radio show to the medical marijuana side of things. Absolutely. Uh, the, the basis for my show, of course, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, John Doe out of Denver. I've been right. listening to him for a couple of years. And uh, my show is just based to give out information to, to patients. Mm -hmm. I'm all for legalization. Okay. Don't, you know, I, I just believe that if we make these medical programs work, then legalization is just right there. And I'm for legalization. As a matter of fact, um, I'm from Los Angeles. I lived here 30 years. Back in the, um, when, when did uh, normal start? Was it about 1970? 70. All right, so 1970, when I was 20 years old, I went down to Sunset Boulevard to a very tiny little storefront and picked up pamphlets and was handing them out as a 20 year old. I'm now 61 years old. I've been waiting 40 something years to be legal. And when I got my card uh, in the mail in 2009, I, I had this just warmth and, and chills and laughter sort of at the same time yeah. becoming legal. Now, of course, I started off being a recreational user for most of my life, but as you get older, you know, it, it's time to use it medicinally as well. Yeah, I often say that once you get your AARP card, that ought to be your medical marijuana card. Well, <laughs> yeah. th that is true, uh, although I'm shying away from even applying for that. Yeah. It's sort of admitting that. Really. <laughs> Give again, <laughs> father time. Uh, yeah, that's that absolutely true. And, and uh, you know, fighting for as long as we uh, as we fought for these, these laws, for some relief, for some reform. I know personally my experience in that, that feeling that you're talking about, was the first time I was driving around with a substantial quantity of marijuana on me uh, and a couple of plants in the back of my Jeep. And I you know, pull up driving wherever and I'm in a turn lane and I look behind me and there's a Portland police car right behind me in the turn lane. And that ice cold feeling you get in the pit of your stomach, like, oh shit, I don't want to get busted, oh my god, oh my god. And then it went, oh, wait a minute. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything illegal. <laughs> well, well, you know what? I, I, that's the way I feel every day. You know, at work, at the dispensary that I work at, technically I'm committing a federal crime every day. Right. But when someone comes up to me and says, Larry, you've saved my life, you know, yeah. by, by this. Uh, I'm, I'm talking specifically about uh, a hash oil pen that a very sick person is using to dose himself. And it's always about dosing, okay, in yeah. the medical end of things. Yeah. Uh, so that gives me the impetus to, to go on and to, and to abide by my state's laws. I'm a big believer in states' rights, and I believe that I am helping people and uh, abiding by the state of New Mexico. Now, still, with these, uh, with these laws that we've gotten changed, there's still people that are getting persecuted, even with their medical cards. Uh, is that happening in New Mexico, some terrible stories there? You know, I don't know about really terrible stories, but, you know, all along the uh, New Mexico Department of Health that runs our uh, program, uh, they sort of erred on the side of law enforcement. They yeah. did not want a lot of producers in the state because they were afraid that uh, excess uh, medicine would be diverted to the black market. So right. they always sort of held it back. But uh, we have some new people involved now uh, that are moving the program forward, even with the fact that uh, our governor is against medical marijuana and marijuana is in that general. That's Susanna Martinez? That's Susanna Martinez. She has stated that if a bill was to reach her desk to turn this whole thing off, that she would do it. Mm. And so uh, myself and some other people, you know, we're, we're on top of it. We're going to make sure that uh, she doesn't get to do that. All right. Well, uh, Larry Love with MedicalMarijuanaRadio.com. Give people, you know, the info on how they can find the station, listen sure. to you. Uh, well, uh, we're doing it on one of your old uh, venues. It's the Stickham, but right. uh, we're looking to move somewhere else. But the, the shorter way to get there is MMJRadio.com. You don't have to type all those letters. We are live Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific. 
uh, which is 8 uh, p.m. Uh, mid, uh, mid Mountain Time and uh, 10 o'clock on the East Coast. We're live at mmjradio.com. Uh, give us a listen. And, yeah. Uh, and keep listening to Russ. I've been listening to him for, for many years, and I, I thank you for all of your work. Well, thank you very much, too, Larry. I appreciate you stopping in. MedicalMarijuanaRadio.com or mmjradio.com. Email at ll at medicalmarijuanaradio.com. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Radical Russ here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup 2012 in Los Angeles, California. All sorts of great people dropping by the booth saying hi, and uh, we are right in the middle of discussions and hanging out, ready to recreate 420 with our good friend Melissa Ballin and also Debbie Goldsberry joining us. Debbie's got the pirate thing going on. Is that a pirate thing? the year this is the freedom oh, fighter of the year hat from the high times cannabis cup in amsterdam that what got raided oh, for the first God. time in 24 years right tell, you were there at well, the raid yes that is what happened oh tell us about that debbie you, you, were, you were there. Oh, there's some headphones for you there. Oh, oh yeah. you want to put headphones? Uh, yeah, there's another set right there. So why don't you grab that far set, and then we can all. All right, we're plugging in. Yeah, you and won't we're hear otherwise. recreating 420 because oh, yeah, it's 420 better. somewhere, and it was 420 here a few minutes ago. Right. Well, we've been doing the it's 420 somewhere raffle where we do a, a <laughs> raffle every 20 after. So we did a 420 Eastern, 420 Central, 420 Mountain, 420 Pacific. Coming up late is the 420 uh, Alaska, and then 420 Hawaii. So we're going to cover all the And this is Give Thanks to the Green Lady, Long Live Jack Herrer, and Free Eddie Lepp. We're, uh, it looks like we're just having fun and games, but we're doing this hard puffing and toughing to Free Eddie Lepp. This is a protest. This is a protest. <laughs> there we're trying to get all the headphones on. And there we go. There we go. I'm in. Recreating 420. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lighterless, unfortunately. Oh, uh, here we go. And at the high times, if you're having a high time, it's hard not to find somebody with a lighter, right? <laughs> That's much better. Now this, Debbie, tell us ready, about ready. Amsterdam. Yes, While we're recreating 420 and this amazing hat that looks like a pirate hat, but it's a freedom fighter hat. It's a tricorner hat. It's from the Revolutionary War. Revolution. That's right. It's the hemp revolution. Steve Hager invented the High Times Freedom Fighters yeah. to fight for the freedom to use hemp for medical, you know, Jack Herrera. Hemp can save the planet. Food, fuel, fiber. What's next? Medicine, Paper, medicine spiritual, and you know. phytoremediation of the damage from Fukushima, yeah. which Glad may be phytoremediation. Up. I don't remediation. Hey, folks out there, if you don't know what the hell that we're talking about, the $12 word, phyto remediation, right? When Chernobyl happened and they got all this nuclear radiation that leaches into the soil, you got to have something that's going to pull that out of the soil. And what does that? Oh, hemp. And they planted a ton of hemp out there, literal tons of hemp out there, to help uh, remediate. Oh, it's fine. To help remediate it. Wait, they did talking. in Japan? <laughs> in, uh, in Chernobyl, in, uh, in Chernobyl. Russia. Yeah, and they, for and they 20 used it. years, yeah, successfully. Russian hemp, and it's successfully, that place around Chernobyl, now, it's, it's not a, it's no national park picnic kind of thing, right? Does it get you stoned if you smoke it? No, no. But uh, uh, the, this is a major thing, and, and we have these nuclear disasters like what we had here with uh, that, uh, like I said, Fukushima in uh, Japan, then one of the ways that we can help to uh, take care of the damage is through planting of hemp. That's right, and cannabis itself as a medicine is cancer preventative, so we should make sure that people in those areas have access to cannabis. There you, know, you go. We've got a lot of concerns about future generations, and we can remediate that problem as well. Yeah, yes, interesting. high yeah. five, yeah. high five at high times, and let me tell you something. We are the only industrialized nation that does not legalize industrial hemp. So we're, we're, oh, we need a lighter again. <laughs> green lady, green lady, we need a lighter. Um, we're the only nation that doesn't allow industrialized hemp. So we're importing from Russia, from China, and we are the biggest importer of hemp in the U.S. Yesterday, Russ said to me, we didn't even talk about the revolution, what happened to you at Occupy. And yesterday, Debbie, who I so look up to, said to me, you're so brave. And, and a lot of people said to me, oh, finally, I'm an activist now because I got arrested because I'd never been arrested before. But um, you can read more about my experiences at the Occupy 
in Mic the check. Weed Boy magazine. They gave me a megaphone because Jeffrey Peterson, the editor of Weed Boy magazine, said, we don't want you to get arrested for holding a megaphone anymore. That, so That's in Weed Boy? Yeah. That's the program. Got it. Yeah, it's in Weed Boy. And so they said, here's a megaphone. Write an article. Tell us each month about, you know, the mic check, which is how you get the message to the people, because the medium is the message. And this is a safer way where uh, hopefully you, you can't get arrested for writing articles yet. <laughs> well, people out there probably know that the U.S. Department of Justice, that they did threaten the magazines. That's one of the early things they yeah. did out the gate in their arsenal. Well, that was that one, uh, you know, they had the four U.S. attorneys out here, and then the one that went above and beyond and said, oh, yeah, if you advertise, we're That's coming right. after you. <laughs> and they held up the magazines from our friends. So yeah. this really is, a, you know, I was at an event recently, a Pebbles Trippet, one of the authors of right. the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act was speaking. And she was speaking about the marijuana wars, and we don't hear that enough, and we're going to look back in history, you know, if we do our job right, people are going to remember the shameful hundred years that we have fought a marijuana war in the United States, a war against our own people. So yeah, I'm happy to be wearing the tri-cornered hat, you know? Revolu this is revolutionary stuff. We have That's to right. free the weed. We have to free the people. Our friends are going to jail. Yeah, and our country was founded by, you know, in a revolutionary sense on an economy that was based on hemp in, in large part. And, uh, you know, it's our heritage, really. I, mean, I look at it a lot, a lot of times, I see it as, you know, how did this country, that for 400 years, you know, has had hemp since 1611, how did we end up where we ended up, you know, emperor wears no clothes, you're absolutely right, man. It's just, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a crime against nature, is what it is. It's just a shame, you know, beyond what we do to the people involved, but just what we do to the planet by not using hemp. And if you take somebody more than three feet, it's kidnapping. But I'm kidnapping radical Russ Belleville and freedom fighter Debbie Goldsberry. I'm taking them way more than three yards uh -oh. on the Prohibition tour. And well, inspired right. by the tour that Debbie and Jack Herrer took around um, the country that John Pilka has told me about. The hemp tour, the old hemp tour. We're bringing it back. We're, we're turning it into the Prohibition back tour. the hemp tour. Because the Prohibition road. is over. We just have to tweet a friend and let them know we need 34 states. We already have how many medical states? 16. 16. We need 34 to change, amend the Constitution. Not to mention it's our natural right to self-medicate. So we're going to let people know Dennis Perone is on the Prohibition Tour. Debbie Goldsbury is on the Prohibition Tour. Wacky Richard Eastman's on the Prohibition <laughs> Tour. The we're spirit tour. of Jack Herrer is definitely, definitely on the tour. Bruce Margolin's on the Prohibition the Tour. Cutout. And we're going to bring yeah. the live standing cutout of Eddie Lepp. And everybody's going to sign it. And we're going to let people know the human solution is on the Prohibition Tour. We're bringing court support and jury nullification and initiatives to you and the Jack Herrer Initiative yeah. all around yeah. the world. We have to end the 100-year marijuana wars. It's way beyond time. Yeah. You know, let's be honest. The, the feds right now, they, they'd crush us out if they had a chance. And they're trying everything in their arsenal. and. You know, if we're not careful, well, they're never going to succeed. It's a plant. It's a, you know, weed. It grows out of the earth. You know, but the fact is, they're trying to harm our people, and we got to be, we got to be tight. We got to make a strategy. We got to push back the marijuana wars. It's got to end. You mentioned having 16 uh, medical states, but I, I like to look at it this way: we got 16 medical states. We've also got uh, 14 decriminalized states, and there's eight of those states that aren't medical. So if you think of how many states there are that are either medical or decriminal, it's like 22. Yeah, let's I mean, move on to just legalizing cannabis or descheduling cannabis. That's how me and Melissa met is over the idea of, can we just deschedule cannabis yeah, get and get schedule. rid of this whole thing? Yeah, it makes no Aspirin's sense. Aspirin's not on the schedule. Because it's it? less dangerous than rhubarb. Yeah. yeah so no, this is loops. ridiculous. Fruit Loops are more dangerous than I, cannabis. I was I was thinking the other day we ought to put together a calendar. You know those 365 day you know word a day calendars or whatever. We ought to have a thing less dangerous than or more dangerous than cannabis a day calendar. <laughs> Just every day Everything something that's water, more dangerous. Water you can overdose on water, <laughs> and then but not on it, right? cannabis. Exactly, and then explain it on the calendar why it would be less dangerous than cannabis. You know. Oh, 
Well, so we want you to add us on Facebook, deschedule yeah. cannabis today, hemp can save the planet, yeah, I was Jack say, Harris, up. Emperor wears no clothes. We are like high social times trends medical media marijuana media. magazine. That's I'm a columnist at High Times Medical Marijuana yeah. Magazine. Come see us there too. We're on Facebook and you can go to hightimes.com. Right on. Melissa Ballin and Debbie Goldsberry, the Freedom Fighter of the Year. And uh, Woo. thank and you guys. And my mentor, because the last cup in San Francisco. She was a celebrity judge, and Debbie had me over Indica. to the judging part parties for Indica, and I really learned a lot <laughs> about when judging. When you judge the High Times Cannabis Cup, it's best to have a team, teamwork. Right? Yeah, teamwork true, helps. True. Indica, you got to hold hands when you exit the door of your house. And I try not to be judgmental, but the cup is one time where it's uh, you're totally allowed to be judgmental and you're judging for the best, and everybody wins, don't you think? We're yes, winning. We are winning. Thank you, ladies, so much for We're joining us winners. here on the show. Live coverage of High Times mm -hmm. Medical Stay Canada. radical, Come. Russ. Stay I radical. Stay radical, and you guys keep fighting the good fight. Thank you so much, darling. Ooh. Thanks for reenacting 420 with us. Oh, very nice. All right, we will be back with more coverage here at High Times Medical Canada's Cup. Stay tuned. <laughs> Radical Russ here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup 2012 and more interviews coming up all day long and we're joined right now by Steve Collette who is here with the Regulate Marijuana Like Wine initiative, initiative and also running for Congress so welcome Steve, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me here. All right, so uh, let's talk about this because we were just, before we went on, you, you had mentioned how uh, you were running for Congress and this district of yours, first of all, who's representing the district right now? Uh, Henry Waxman is. Okay. So it's Henry Waxman's district, and are, are you running uh, with against Henry Waxman in uh, primary votes? Yeah, there's a, it's a top two primary race. Okay. And uh, I'm a libertarian candidate. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So uh, the top two, it's uh, irrespective of party. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, that, okay. so uh, running for Congress, but you kind of explain how uh, you were mentioning how Part of why you went to run for Congress had to do with this very issue, you know, regulating marijuana like wine. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I worked on uh, Proposition 19. Oh, yes. And if you recall at the very end, the uh, Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, came out and said that he was going to enforce marijuana laws no matter what. Right. And uh, I think the, these laws are unjust, they're discriminatory, they're wasteful. And uh, at that point, I decided I'm going to try to change it at the federal level. And uh, there was a special election last year to replace Jane Harmon. I ran in that election. And uh, I'm a candidate now in the 33rd. OK, and the, now this 33rd district is, uh, you know, L.A. area, right? Just like the coast? Yeah, it, uh, it, it starts at Palos Verdes, comes up the coast, Redondo, Manhattan, Hermosa Beach. Uh, El Segundo, Santa Monica, Marina del Rey, uh, Malibu, all the way to the border of Ventura, and then goes up Calabasas, includes the UCLA area. Okay. So this would be, uh, you know, I would think uh, a natural bastion of support for this type of initiative, this type of idea of changing our outdated and cruel and unjust marijuana laws. Are you finding that true when you talk to the people of the district? Absolutely. The, the district is one of the most physically beautiful in the world, yeah. and uh, and the people are very freedom oriented. Uh, and, and that's 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 great. And, and with regulate marijuana like wine, we just did an interview recently uh, with Stephen Downing, and he was mentioning the fantastic support you were seeing in the latest polling, like 62 percent support. Uh, tell us about that, the growing support for this initiative, and how you're going to use that moving forward. Because I know time is of the essence in this point, at this point. Yeah, Stephen Downing is a hero. He a, was a former deputy chief of police for L.A. who's come out and courageously said these drug laws are a failure and they're unjust and they're wasteful. And uh, so we went out to get, get a poll to see what the reaction was. And we got 62% supported us, 35% opposed, 3% unsure. And when we gave some negative facts after, after telling them about our initiative, Facts that aren't even true, you know, the, the gateway drug concept, sure. uh, things like that, and gave them facts. It it withheld at 56%. It's a very solid 
group of supporters. So Reefer Madness was only able to sway like six percent of, yeah, right. of the support. <laughs> no, it's very, it's a, it's a de very declining portion of the population. We get closer and closer. If we can get it on the ballot, we're going to win this year. All right, folks. The the website address is regulatemarijuanalikewine.com if you want to get more information. And uh, also, uh, elect Colette for Congress, elect Colette, C-O-L-L-E-T-T -T dot com for more information on that. And uh, is, so being here at the uh, Cannabis Cup, is this your first time at an event like this? Uh, first time at the Cannabis Cup. Uh, it happened to be in Los Angeles this year, which is terrific. Yeah, but you've done other uh, hemp expos or you know, cannabis? Yeah, you know? I've been to other hemp expos. Expos and uh, the uh, DPA conference, yeah. uh, also which was this year in LA, which that is was, a terrific, yeah. uh, terrific event. Also, yeah, is this is this something that uh, you know you'd like to make as a major part of you know, campaigning in the future as, as we get closer to election day? Because I know, that, for example, you mentioned uh, well, I was doing a previous interview where you mentioned Governor Gary Johnson, and I, I thought it was noteworthy that here he is running for president, and he's showing up at the Hemp Fest and such. And maybe some people would say, perhaps that hurts. Perhaps that makes someone not take you seriously as a candidate. Did you ever feel that? Or, or does, does coming out here just feel like, you know, what should be done? Well, that, you know, for, uh, for a long time, that's how people thought. Uh, that was the conventional wisdom. But um, as Gary Johnson has said many times, um, he doesn't use conventional wisdom as his uh, yeah. Way to make decisions. So you're saying you're running as a libertarian. You know, I, I would imagine you followed his career. You followed, uh, you followed Ron Paul, and well, see things. We're doing it live. Followed Ron Paul and other uh, uh, folks that have run on the libertarian ticket. Uh, uh, what, what would you think of? I mean, you know, of Dr. Paul, who seems to be doing well in the Republican primaries. Would you, would you like to see that him come forward and run as a libertarian? What do you think about the electoral politics the, at the national level for libertarians? Well, that would be a fantasy to have like a Ron yeah. Paul, Gary Johnson ticket. Yeah. Uh, my office is in Venice. I'm a CPA by trade. Okay. I've opened up my offices in Venice. As, it's a Ron Paul phone bank. Now, Gary Johnson is my number one guy, but we're, we're shocking people because we have signs in the building that say, Ron Paul for president and say Gary Johnson for president. Yeah. So I support both of them. I know Gary Johnson supports Ron Paul. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing what I can to help the Ron Paul people. Uh, but my hero for the uh, uh, libertarian is the libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson. Right on. All right. Well, uh, I'm so glad to have you here. Steve Collette, who's running for Congress, who's 36? 33rd. 33rd. 33rd district here uh, in uh, California. Elect. Colette.com, C-O-L-L-E-T-T, -T, but also, and, and importantly for what we're doing here, regulate marijuana like wine. Regulate marijuana like wine. You can get there at regulatemarijuanalikewine.com. Thanks for joining us, Steve Colette. Appreciate you being here on Normal Show Live. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with more interviews, more coverage here of the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup. Stick around. So here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup, we are now going to be visiting with Joe Grumbine, who has got quite the story to tell here in California. So uh, I will let Joe tell it. Joe, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I like to say I'm currently out of custody, so it's a good day. Any day that you don't wake up behind bars is a good day. Exactly. Well, let's tell folks about why that's a concern for you. Well, um, I had a, well, I have an ongoing case. I was a collective operator and uh, was raided back in uh, 2009 and uh, just... Which, st which city is your collective in, by the way? Well, we were in Long Beach and okay. we, were, we also had a place in Garden Grove. Okay, and Long Beach and Garden Grove. Yeah, right. exactly. So Southern California. Anyhow, they filed on us and, um, you know, made me an offer. I couldn't refuse, but I refused it. I got no criminal record prior to this. and. I don't believe that anybody should have one for this. So right. I also believe that the law is supposed to protect me. That's why I did what I did, why I took the chance and put a target on my head, uh, believing that the law would stand behind me if I did it a certain way. And so anyways, they put everything they had. I'm not quite sure what caused it to be this way, but the judge sided really heavily with the prosecutor. And um, there was 
It was a travesty. I mean, there were yeah. there were. You now, know, you, you, were you able to say in court that this was all about medical collective under? They allowed me to say that, but but not under 420. You okay. See? Okay. They they limited what we were allowed to do. This judge was very biased, and he allowed the prosecution to do anything they wanted. And us, I couldn't mention the law. I couldn't mention 420 AG guidelines. I couldn't mention. They withheld evidence that they seized from me. They wouldn't let me <laughs> present it. They seized it. They used it against me, but I couldn't use it for me. Like, wow. Yeah, like minutes from our, our you know, director's meetings. I, I kept minutes. I did the things they told me to do, yeah. but they wouldn't let me use it. So at the end of the day, I got convicted. Um, but we did a couple of really bold things in this trial. Um, prior to it going to trial, the, the prosecutor had motioned for us to have no defense. The judge granted it, and I had no medical marijuana defense. We went to the Fourth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals in California on a Hail Mary pass, and we filed a writ to overturn that, and it never happens. They don't ever take cases prior to trial, but for whatever reason, they took this one. They granted the motion, and we won in appellate court um, our ability to have a defense. So we walked in there empowered. I mean. You know, I said, screw you. If I've got a defense, I can win this. Right. You if know, it, I if was, you let me tell the truth. All I wanted was, <laughs> all I wanted was a chance to talk. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me show you how it was. And and so the judge was pissed. And he said, we you know we all asked if we could have a little bit extra time. You know, we just today got granted a defense. Tomorrow, I'd like to prepare it. And the judge says, no, we're moving forward. Right, right now. Right now. We're you need not a defense, winning. but you have to make so it up right now. They called in the jury, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So that was where it all got ugly. Everybody was like, what? Nobody <laughs> could believe it. So luckily, um, I've got a group called The Human Solution that I helped to found, and we provide court support, and uh, we raise money for legal defense and things like that. But I was able to have, you know, 20, 30, 50 people there in the courtroom with me watching this. Because otherwise, you know what? If you don't have anybody watching, anybody documenting what's happening, weird stuff can happen. Yeah, Nobody people don't understand it. that that's one of the best things you can do. Like, like, what can I do as an activist? What can I do as an activist? Just sit your butt, show in, a up. <laughs> yeah, sit your butt in a court seat for a while. That's what we say. Though. You know, all you got to do is show up. That's yeah. it. No training, no money, no anything. Just... Just show up and sit in a seat. And by I, showing up, you're doing more than you know 90% of them. 99%. I, I, I love things like this, but it's funny. If you look over the side where everybody's medicating, yeah. it's wall-to-wall -wall people. Yeah. You come over here to the nonprofit side, the activism side, yeah. there's some people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you look at where energy goes in this community, man. If we could just really tap some of that, what a difference we could make. Yeah. If every one of those guys signed that petition, Maybe by now we'd have this thing fixed. Yeah, I have a I have a standard stump speech that I do at uh, Seattle Hemp Fest every year, and I, I get up on stage and there's fifty thousand you know tokers out right. there in front of me, and I'll say, "How many people love to smoke weed?" Right. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Say, How many people have called your congressperson this year? Cricket. Yeah. Cricket. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I you know I our group is a grassroots organization, and we we try to educate people as well as support. And my role in this is I, I try to get people um, to get people. Yeah. You know, the key to this thing, if you can catch a teacher, if you can catch a leader, find one and get them to start doing their thing, yeah. that's how this thing's going to spread exponentially. So you mentioned uh, your group, The Human Solution. That's correct. Uh, working to you know, help people in these legal dire straits. Uh, give people like a website, contact, and tell people what it is. You bet. Well, The Human Solution is a nonprofit grassroots organization. We're not a collective of any kind. We're just a, a patient advocacy group and our mission is to provide education and support to cannabis patients, providers, POWs, and the community at large. And so what we do is we, we set up tables, I do workshops, um, I'll come into collectives and spend time with patients uh, in a number of different topics, but everything from public speaking to jury nullification to how to be an activist, what can I do? I, I, I have a presentation called The Power of One. You know, what one person can do, and I think most people, they don't act because they don't think their action will have an impact in the world. Sure. And I believe quite the opposite. You know, if you go out there and you look, make yourself real small, look at the stars and say, the universe is so huge, I'm nothing, right? And yet, I can have an impact across the entire fabric of time and space by doing certain things. 
and mostly it's showing up and deciding I want to do something. That's right. And then maybe talking, and maybe, and then maybe getting somebody else to talk. I mean, it's it's, it's exponential. So that's what we're about. Um, we also court support is a huge piece of what we do. It's something that I truly believe this law is going to be fixed in the courts faster than it's going to be fixed on the legislative. Yeah. And, and here's why. I believe that too. I don't. Personally, I don't think any of these initiatives are going to make it through. I don't think there's enough support for them this, this year. And if yeah. they don't come this year, who knows what's going to happen. Right. Meanwhile, every single day, in every single courtroom, in every city, in every county of California, and all the other states, there are defendants sitting in front of judges and having their lives changed, usually for the worse, as a result of our justice system and our, our policy of prohibition. And that's what the reality is. So yeah. if we can get to jurors, if we can get to people and, and get them to realize what they're doing, you know, I don't think even half of the jurors realize what oh, they do. No. When they it. convict somebody, they go, oh, well, yeah. they don't know the sentencing. They don't know anything. They just said, you're guilty. You broke the law. Uh, we, we see it in trial after trial where afterwards, you know, we, they, the jurors are informed what the hell just happened. Right. And, and they break down in tears. Right. Some of them. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What I, I can't believe what I just did. Right. Yeah. So we have to get to them before. And so I try to train jurors. I try to educate them. Let them know not only about jury nullification. That's huge. But you know what? Somebody brought up a really good point. Jury nullification happens all the time in the South, yeah. and not for good necessarily. Right. So to advocate for that could have an unintended consequence. But really, I believe that most of the people that are doing bad are going to do it anyways, and they're already doing it. But if we can inspire some people to do right, I think alcohol prohibition began to change in the courtrooms. And people said, wait a minute, this is stupid. People were getting their lives destroyed over, over a drink. Yeah. No more different than a plant, in my eyes. I have a, a, a very simple philosophy about this. We come to these things, and there's all these different organizations, Normal and NASA and MAP and all these different groups, and oftentimes they don't get along real good, and I think it's the worst thing in the world. So I always say, what ties us together? And I say right off the bat, no one belongs in jail for a plant. Yep. Start there. And if we can, whatever, whatever else you got going on, start there we yeah. all can agree on that i have a, i have a friend an activist friend in oregon uh, jennifer alexander who put it like this she said instead of concentrating on whether you're a spiritualist or a medicalizer or a legalizer how about we're all just anti-prohibitionists beautiful exactly. all just anti -prohibitionists. right 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 exactly i i firmly believe that so <clears throat> anyways uh, a big part of what we do is court support i believe that um I've sat in a lot of courtrooms, and most of them empty. And it's the norm for a defendant to sit in a courtroom by himself with his lawyer, maybe a family member. It's not normal to have a defendant sit in a courtroom and have the seats full. Standing your moment. They don't do that. That only happens in real high-profile cases where a celebrity's involved or, or, or a cop getting killed or something like that. Other than that, nobody cares. I've been there dozens of courtrooms in dozens of cities and it's like they're all the same. But when we show up and we've got 20, 30 people all dressed well, all behaving on their best behavior, uh, I, I, I offer to people to put on a symbol, a solidarity ribbon or something that says, that identifies it, says we're all together. It makes a difference. We've walked in and seen prosecutors get all weird and, and nervy and throws them <laughs> off their game. Yeah. They complain about us. I've had my ribbon be asked to be removed from four different courtrooms and on no case was, the, was it granted. We've always been able to bring our ribbon in. Good. So we have this solidarity ribbon. It's a little green ribbon with the red cross on it. Our patients and volunteers make these things as a symbol of solidarity. It doesn't say anything other than I support cannabis patients. Just like yours does. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. So we've created this one that sort of stands out as a little different, and we get them in courtrooms. We get them in uh, when we show up at a city council meeting or a, a county board meeting. Same thing. We all show up unified. Why it not? makes a difference. So. Well, Joe Grummine, you're fighting the good fight here, and I know there's still plenty left to fight. Oh, yeah. We're a long way from being done. I wish you all the best of luck and that everything turns out as 
well as possible. The Human uh, Solution? Absolutely. Uh, is it a website, humansolution.com? Yeah, the, the humansolution.org. Oh, dot .org, okay. Yeah, absolutely. All and right. we've got a Facebook presence and Twitter and all that, so right on. look look for Human Solution and we'll we'll set you up, show you how to be a better activist. All right, humansolution.org. Thank you so much, Joe, Thank for stopping much. by and have a good uh, medical care. All right, stuff. let me give you one of my ribbons. Oh, fantastic. If Thank you'd you. wear it, I'd be honored. I would love to. There you go. You got an all red one. Oh shoot! <laughs> kind of disintegrated there. Yeah. Uh, you got a um a lighter? Uh, oh no, I got it. It was just a thread. All right, we'll be right back with our raffle, right? Somebody call nine one one. Shoddy fire burning on the dance floor. Esto para todas las mujeres que están en candela. Baby, you on fire. Sean Kingston, Mr. 305, what I wanna? You're listening to the Normal Network, where the time is 4...